Creating a space that works functionally and aesthetically is not always the easiest thing. I've been working on finding this balance of productivity and happiness, of being able to walk into a room and really feel comfortable with it for a while now. And it's been a journey and in many ways will probably always will be. But right now, I'm pretty happy with how it's all coming together. Now, wherever possible, I've linked all of the products in the description down below. As a photographer and a creative, there are a bunch of things that I need to be the most productive in my space. So let me show you what I've created. The office itself is broken into two halves, my main setup and the secondary workstation, as I like to call it. While I've covered a few things in previous videos, there are a bunch of updates that add to how the space is working more efficiently for me now. But firstly, I wanna show you this super interesting feature lighting setup from Govi, who also happens to be the sponsor of this video. It's called the Glide Hexagon Pro, and it's a unique take on the lighting wall panels you may have already seen. However, these lights are something else altogether. The 3D panels and the lights inside them offer a really unique look when placed on the wall. They stick to the wall using these removable double-sided tape so you can change it up in the future if you want to as well. The setup is easy and simple as they go through all the detailed instructions, which is pretty much almost foolproof. You're free to design the 10 panel structure any way you want. I played around with them on the desk before I settled on this design. But you can also design them or pick a design that's already made inside the Govi app too. Now the app is the engine that really powers the whole thing and really is only limited to your imagination. In the end, I settled with warm natural tones and colors that suit the room. But you can go wild with the options that they have available. And the really fun thing is you can link them to your music or even your gaming setup and it will sync up with the design and the colors to match. For me, I just really love the simple geometric shape it offers and how it fills the otherwise bland wall space with some functional but interesting lighting to the new side of the office. But before we go too far into this side of the office, I wanna show you a few things that I've updated in my main setup. Now, firstly, if you haven't seen my original setup video, you can click here to watch it as I go over all of this side of the office in a little bit more detail. But here's a quick update on what I'm working with on this side. The desk is from OmniDesk, which I still love after months of use, and it holds up exactly how I want it to. It's strong and it's sturdy and it doesn't bounce around like other desks do. To keep it all clean and somewhat minimal, I'm using the cable management from OmniDesk also, which is one of the big keys to keeping your desk minimal and tidy. On the desk, I finally updated my keyboard and mouse combo like I said I would. So for the keyboard, I'm using the Logitech MX keys, which are a massive upgrade on the cheap and nasty Dell option I had before. I mean, don't get me wrong, they did the job, but since using the MX keys, I realized what I've been missing and how much more effective the keyboard is to my productivity. Simple things like just a screenshot button or backlighting that uses proximity sensors or even just a simple USB charging instead of replacing the batteries every few months has been very impressive. The mouse, I've also finally shifted to the light of the MX Master 3S. Ergonomically, it's been a game changer, but the customizability with the button options is what really set this thing apart. Not to mention how quiet it is to use. While some people might enjoy the sounds of a keyboard tapping away, myself included, the sounds of a mouse clicking can really start to get irritating. It's like someone clicking a pen in a quiet waiting room. But the Master 3S is soft and quiet, but still keeps the feedback that you want with each press. But again, it's the simple things that turn up the productivity like customizing the mouse for specific programs that make things like video editing a much faster thing. Beside it is a status anxiety mouse pad, which I don't actually use for the mouse, but I use it as a, a little placeholder for my coffee or other drinks so they don't mark or scratch the desk. On the desk, I've also got this bowl that my daughter made for me and a tiny Lakers basketball, which she bought with her own money. Bless her little soul. I've also finally upgraded my monitor to a larger curved option from Prism Plus. I was drawn to these guys for a number of reasons, but I was also a little bit skeptical. Firstly was the price. How could the price be so low for the specs that it was offering? It's a 31 and a half inch screen, which is about four inches bigger than my last one, but it also offers 140% of the sRGB color gamut, which is really important for me as a photographer. But it also has crazy things like 165 hertz refresh rate, HDR, and features like low blue light, flicker free and adaptive sync, all with a three year warranty. So I'm pretty impressed. 
Now, even though I did have a huge wide color gamut, I still need to tweak those colors with a bit of calibration. But I think for most people, you're gonna really love the colors just straight out of the box. The one I'm using is the XQ315 Pro. It's a VA screen, but for me, I didn't find any issues with the wider viewing angles or colors. In fact, the colors have been a huge surprise to me. This thing is truly beautiful. The quantum dot tech that they've used definitely helps give it a punchier contrast, but I'm definitely impressed with the wide color range across most of the color gamuts. The curve is subtle and the 31 and a half inch size of the monitor works well as either a single monitor setup, but it's also small enough to use as a double monitor setup, like I do with my MacBook. The bezels are thin and they really stretch the screen right out to the edge. They also have physical buttons on the monitor because for me, I just can't stand the touch style buttons on most monitors. I've attached it to my monitor arm, which is also from OmniDesk 2, but overall, I'm pretty happy with how this monitor is working for me so far. Now under the monitor, I'm using a homemade shelf riser, which is on the larger size, but it works well with the Ikea drawers that I've trimmed to fit the divide perfectly. The drawers are great for those items which are used semi-regularly, but that I also prefer to be hidden away to keep the setup as clean as possible. My voiceover mic is the Rode NT-USB, and I'm also using the arm from Rode 2. It's no fancy Shure microphone, but I think for what I need it for, it does a really good job. The arm is great because you can just easily tuck it away when you don't need it, or just swing it out when you need to do a voiceover like this one. As this room is actually quite small, I've had to be quite thoughtful in how I manage my storage. As I do carry a fair bit of gear for various needs and projects. While my tool chest has been a lifesaver, it's just not able to carry the whole load. So that's why I've opted for this TV unit to sit beside the window. It's the perfect size and look for the space. I've moved my whole charging station into it, but without the clutter of seeing all the cords. It's also the spot that I store all my backup hard drives and a few other knickknacks. On the wall, I have two wall hooks that store my camera bags. Although I have recently upgraded one of them to the Low Pro Pro Tactic bag, which I might go through with you in the future, but maybe that's for another video. Closer to the door, I've also added this cabinet for further storage, which now reintroduces the other side of the office. Now above the space, it's two lac floating shelves from Ikea. They're the longer 190 centimeter wide design. I was worried with how well they would sit on the wall with items that I wanted to put on them. Originally, I actually wanted to make them to be a little bit more functional and store a few of the items that are now in the cabinets. But in the end, I just thought that they look better as display shelves and they just help frame the wall and give that space some extra juicy looks. I needed to drill some extra holes in the base plate because I decided on screwing these directly into the studs for a more sturdy shelf and the existing holes didn't match up. Luckily, my old man loves helping on jobs like this and because these shelves are so long, it was always gonna be a two person job anyway. On the shelves, I've placed a few items like my first ever DSLR and one of my first ever video cameras, as well as a few items which belong to my grandfather, which date back to the World Wars. And then I've sprinkled just a few different items to just help fill the space and give it a bit more of a homely and a more personal feel to it. The table is my old sit-stand desk, which is now being used as a multi-purpose bench for all sorts of different things. As an artist, I need to print art that people have purchased from me. So I need somewhere where I can prep, print and wrap the artwork. But this space can also be used as a second desk for when my wife wants to use it or just a spot to do product photography, B-roll, or maybe just organizing things like packing my camera bag for a shoot. The printer itself is a Canon Pro 1000, which is capable of producing super high quality artwork prints up to A2 in size. It's not a huge printer by artwork standards, but it still takes up quite a fair bit of space in the office here. To say that I'm happy with this space is a complete understatement, which my wife can fully agree with too. She was never the biggest fan of random boxes and gear floating around the office with no real home. But I've also really enjoyed putting it all together. So I think I'm probably gonna be doing more of these types of videos in the future. So if you've enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button and it's probably worth subscribing too while you're at it. So thanks so much for watching, but it's time for you to go and get out of here.